Greetings, math friends. I want to talk about the fact that a differentiable function implies that your function is continuous. This is something that you may have been taught, but maybe haven't seen a proof of. So I want to discuss how we prove that. So I have the statement here, uh, and we're going to establish that our function is going to associate some domain to some range. Uh, we'll call this f uh, to be our function, and then d is just some domain and r some range. And we are going to say that it is differentiable at the point x sub a. And x sub a is going to be a element in our domain. And further, that x sub a is going to be an accumulation point of our domain. And so then this is going to imply that f is continuous at the point x sub a. Now, some of you may not be familiar with the term accumulation point, so I want to discuss that a little bit. So I have definition of accumulation point here. So let g be a set of real numbers. A real number x sub a is an accumulation point of g if and only if Every neighborhood of x sub a contains infinitely many points of g. So this is a term and a phraseology that you may see in a couple of different mathematics courses. You may see something to this effect in an analysis course or possibly in a point set topology course. So we're going to... I'm going to give you a little illustration of this so we can kind of see what we're talking about. So when we look at our x and y axis here, we're going to say x sub a is arbitrarily here. So x sub a is supposed to be an accumulation point, uh, and then g is some set of real numbers. So our x-axis here is a real number line, and at some x sub a, we are going to look at what's going on here. So we want a neighborhood. So what's a neighborhood? So we're going to take this point and add some number to it and subtract some number from it to create an open interval. So typically, uh, this is designated as a delta. So some tiny number as small as you want or maybe as large as you want. It doesn't really have to be a specific size. It's just you're going to designate a number and then you're going to have an open interval around this point. So if I add delta to this at some place over here, I'm going to have x sub a plus delta. And over here, if I subtract delta from this, I'm going to have x sub a minus delta. And so I have this interval here. And within this interval, we should have our graph moving in this region. And so each point in the graph is going to be these points that we're talking about. So looking, looking just within what is confined by our interval, do we have points that we're interested in contained in here? And it says we should have infinitely many. So if this is a real number line, if you have a graph passing through this interval, you have a subset of the graph and infinitely many points are contained in here. If you look back at the geometric description of what a line is, a line is or can be thought of as a uh, string of points that is taunt, so there's no sag in it, and it is a string of points. Uh, the, the line is 
an undefined term in geometry. The point is an undefined term in geometry. Uh, so we have to come up with descriptions for these things. Now, if you put a little sag in your line, you can say it's some curve that fits into here. And so essentially any segment that you have of that line or that curve is going to also contain infinitely many points from your real number set here. So we have this interval. We're talking about some curve passing through here as we look. And if we approach from the right hand side and the left hand side, we want to approach this point that corresponds with x sub a. Now, as you may have seen in some of your calculus courses, the point here doesn't actually have to exist as a part of the domain, but as you approach that in the idea of a right and left hand limit, you should be approaching the same point, whether it is a part of your domain or not. And so the way that I've drawn this, if we approach from the right moving towards the left and from the left moving towards the right, my fingertips would meet if I follow this uh, curve down. So regardless of whether the point is in the domain or not, I am approaching the same thing as a limit. You start to see ideas of right and left hand limit in here. And we know that calculus has these arguments that deal with limits as you approach some point. So we want to talk about differentiability. If you look at definition of differentiability, you see that a limit as some variable is approaching some point and you get that idea of the derivative. So this ties together, this line of thinking ties together. So let's start to build a function that we're going to talk about. All right, we're going to define a function here. This is going to be the function psi of x and it is going to be defined as f of x minus f of x sub a divided by x minus x sub a, and we are not going to allow x to be equal to x sub a. So this denominator is not going to go to zero and be undefined. So starting with this idea of defining this function, this thing will have a limit if we allow x to approach x sub a. Further, we need to define uh, domain and range. So looking at psi here, psi is going to go from the domain, which is going to be the real numbers, remove the, uh, this accumulation point here, and this is going to go to the real numbers. And then we are going to start to make our argument to uh, prove that this theorem is in fact true. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the function psi and I'm going to set it equal to itself. Now, we have this by the reflexive property that a function should be equal to itself. And from this point, I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra. First of all, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator and eliminate the fraction on the uh, left-hand side. And so I get f of x minus f of x sub a is going to be f of x minus f of x sub a divided by x minus x sub a times x minus x sub a. And then continuing on, I am going to add f of x sub a to both sides so that I have a new function defined here, f of x, which will be defined in terms of these other parts. All right, so now that I have f of x here, I'm going to take the limit of both sides and I'm going to allow x to approach the accumulation point x sub a. 
So we will have the limit as x approaches x sub a of f of x, which is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches x sub a of the entire right-hand side. We have this now separated out. So we have the limit of this, limit of this, and limit of this while maintaining the limit of the left-hand side. So notice that this is the definition for derivative. So this is just going to be the derivative of f at x uh, uh, sub a as x approaches x sub a here this is going to go to zero this is why we had removed x sub a from the domain of this function here is because we didn't want zero in the denominator so this is going to be times zero and then this is going to be simply f of x sub a looking at this now we have that f prime of x sub a times zero is zero. Zero plus f of x sub a is f of x sub a. And so we do have the point x sub a being achieved here. This uh, shows that if you start with the differentiable function that's differentiable at a point, then it will actually be continuous at that point. I hope this has been uh, a good informational piece to kind of help our understanding of a little bit of the background of some of the terminology and the ideas that are behind the reasoning why we have this idea that if you have a differentiable function, this is implying that you have continuity uh, because of this idea of, of the accumulation point. If you're differentiable at a point, then that point has to be um, continuous in your function. That we have a good domain and a good range to work with and then we can make this conclusion that the differentiability is going to lead us to the idea that we have something that is continuous. Um, some of these arguments may be new to some of you. These are arguments that you should probably see in a real analysis course at some level. Uh, again, there are some terms here that you may see in a point set topology class. Down in the description, I'm going to leave some references in case you're interested in reading more. I am not sponsored by any of these references. Hopefully this has been educational for you. Hopefully that this has been maybe a little entertaining for you. Cheerful calculations.